Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today, we're gonna to be talking about rail shots. Now, I've made some videos on this in the past. This is gonna be an updated version. And I also recently made a video where we talked about situations where the ball is not quite against the rail. But today, we're gonna to be talking about shots where the cue ball has to send an object ball that is currently frozen to the rail into a pocket and then how to get position with those shots. So we have our object balls on the rails here. We're just moving around the table very easily. This is a very simple drill. After watching this video, I would suggest that you guys do something like this, something similar to this to help you work on your rail shots. But first, let's look at a few tips that are going to help you make these shots and help you get position with these shots. Let's get started. The first thing that I read as a kid was to aim to shoot the ball and the cushion at the same time. So you're trying to get your cue ball right in here in this gap between the ball and the cushion. Well, this is 99% correct because really a perfect rail shot, we're hitting the rail right in front of the ball, but we're talking about millimeters very small areas. So for the most part, the average player, even the average pro, is not going to be able to place this ball at the ghost ball minus one millimeter. So if you aim to hit the ball and the cushion at the same time, that is going to help you with a lot of your rail shots. Number two, get your speed down. You'll see sometimes we'll get down on these shots. Let's say I'm playing the seven and I might really pop it. Well, that's fine if you hit it perfectly. So to keep yourself from having to hit these shots perfectly, when you can dial back your speed, the pocket will be your friend if you have light enough speed. If you hit that ball like that and you're off by a half an inch, forget about it. You're not making that shot. So dial back your speed. This will help a lot of you with just about every shot you shoot in pool. So what is the best English to help you make this shot? It gets complicated because a lot of you have been taught that when you make a cut shot to use outside English to make that shot. I shoot outside English on just about every cut shot regardless of the situation unless I need to do something with this cue ball to get position. But what about rail shots? Now everything changes a little bit. Outside English on this two ball would actually be left hand English. If we shoot it with left hand English, we are asking ourselves to spin this ball off the rail, spin our cue ball a little bit too close to the object ball just from deflection, and it's going to make the shot more difficult. This is where all bets are off. Everything changes. That ball is on the rail. We want to use inside English, which gets complicated to people when the ball's on the rail. But inside English on this two ball would be me hitting it on the right hand side. My cue ball is spinning counterclockwise. And what happens, remember the first rule that we're hitting the ball in the cushion first, but not quite. We're hitting a little bit in front of the ball. If we hit with right hand English here, our cue ball hits the rail and spins off into that ball. It all happens very quickly, even in slow motion, a lot of people don't catch what's happening and holds that ball against the rail with the reverse English. Now, you don't need to know all of that. A lot of things are going on that aren't going to affect you. What you do need to know is you want to play this with inside English, which is right hand English on this side, and inside English, which is left hand English on this side, unless you need to change things up for position, which we will talk about in a minute. Here's our shot with right hand English. Not only does it make the ball makeable, but it also gives us an opportunity to play different types of position. Here's the ball with outside English. Notice, it came off the rail. I didn't intentionally miss that. I hit it in the exact same spot and the outside English throws that ball to the right. Left hand English 
throws the ball to the right when you make contact with it. You can hit these shots with the wrong type of English. Okay, let's call it the wrong English. Instead of inside, outside. But it makes the shot that much more difficult. You are going to have to adjust your speed and your accuracy better be on point. The times that it really comes into play where we are shooting this shot with inside one day and outside the next is with draw shots. If you have a draw shot and you're trying to get back here, say to play position, and you need to come off of that rail with left hand spin so that you can get back over here, now this shot becomes more difficult. To a lot of top players, a lot of good players, this is one of their favorite shots. They can't wait to shoot it. You know why? Because they got good at it and everybody else sucks at it. Why? Because it's a difficult shot. A lot of people want to play this shot, but understand, if you hit this with anything less than perfect, you're going to have a difficult time making it. But just keep in mind, if you can avoid the English, this is your next rule. If you can avoid the English, avoid the English by all means, with the exception of that inside English to help you make the shot. Now, let's talk about distance. If you have a standard deflection pool cue and you are trying to shoot this shot with inside English, you may have some big challenges because if you shoot this with right hand English, which would be inside again, you are having this cue ball deflect to the left, which means you're not gonna hit that ball in the cushion unless you have adjusted for it. So understand as this distance increases, you need to hit it better and better, more and more accurately. And if you have a standard deflection cue, it's gonna be more and more difficult. If you don't have a low deflection cue, you need to go out of your way to number one, master the deflection on your cue, and number two, try to get some of this spin off the ball. What I would do in some situations with this cue might be different than what I might do with another one of my cues. So keep in mind, distance matters when you're shooting these shots with this English. But in the meantime, running English is going to get you there, which is also right hand English. The next challenge that you're going to have when it comes to rail shots, now that I showed you a couple ways to make them, is what's going to happen to the cue ball. Well, there is math that will show you, but it is far too complicated for you to do it at the table. There's no peace signs or flying birds or doggy shadows or anything that are going to help you here. You need to put in reps so that you can visualize the angle that that ball is gonna take when it comes off. It is not going to come straight across the table. Remember, your cue ball is moving forward. It is going to head over there. Whether or not it's going to hit that rail first, hit this rail first, or go in that pocket depends on what kind of English you put on the ball and also how well did you hit it. The good news is, if you hit it well enough to put it in the pocket, the cue ball becomes very predictable, but you have to put in reps to understand that. So let me give you an example. This is what our shot looks like on the five ball with top right hand English. We are going to make this ball and come off of that short rail every time with that kind of English from that angle. But let's say we're playing the one ball and we have zero English on this shot. We're further away from the pocket. It's a critical shot. We want to make it. Watch the path of our cue ball. Remember, we're starting here at this diamond. And I want you to see what happens relative to that pocket. We come over here, we make our one ball, our cue ball is headed right over there to the pocket. How do we know? Well, I didn't do any math to figure it out, but I've shot thousands of them, tens of thousands of them in my lifetime. So I have a sense of it. Where your cue ball is going to go after hitting the rail will depend on what you do to it, how well you hit it, and what that angle is. And the only way you're gonna get it down pat and not scratch on some of these shots is to recognize that that ball is moving forward. Whether you stun it or not, it's gonna take a different path. If you put any kind of draw on it, any kind of follow, any kind of English is gonna change the trajectory of that ball. And the only way you can measure it is to shoot a bunch of them and see what's happening 
as you shoot each and every one of them. So now that you have some tips on how to make these shots, how do you get better at them? Practice, obviously. You gotta do some drills, guys. Put three balls on the rail, about a diamond apart. If you're an intermediate player, shoot it like that, top right hand English. If you are a beginner player or a low intermediate player, shoot it without the English. If you are an advanced player, mix it up. Shoot it with inside, shoot it with outside. See the different things that you can do with this shot. But if you're going to play the shot with low left hand English, low right hand English, or high outside English, you better have the first shot down pat first. You're not going to be able to jump the line and do those more advanced shots until you have that one down and then you'll be able to do a lot of other things. So put in your reps with these, set them up on your table all over the place and just run them off. It's a lot of fun and if you have this shot down and you have it cold, you're gonna be ahead of most of the people that you play because people are scared to death about this shot. They don't know the science behind it. They don't know what to aim for. They don't know to hit it soft. They don't know a lot of things. And you right now are ahead of the crowd. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit us in the comments. Let us know what you think and did I say subscribe? Yeah, if I didn't, I'm saying it now. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later.